Hey guys, Prowl1701 here, and today I'm going to be ranking each Doctor's third season, because most Doctors <coughs> tend to do three seasons. You can really do a list for the first, second, and third season. Anything after that gets a little dodgy, because most of them don't do four seasons. Um, but we're going to be looking at each Doctor who had a third season being ranked. So of course we won't see the sixth Doctor, although to be fair, sometimes I consider Big Finish his second season and Trial of a Time Lord is third season, but we won't be doing that for purposes of the video. So no Sixth Doctor, no Ninth Doctor, no Eighth Doctor, no Fourteenth Doctor. We have ten entries to go through, and we're going to be looking at the third season of every Doctor that had one and ranking them from worst to best. In bottom, At the bottom is Flux, Series 13 with Jodie Whittaker. Uh, Flux is just kind of mediocre at best. It's not good. Uh, the War of the Suntarans is pretty good, and Village of the Angels is pretty good, and I think they would have been really good standalone episodes. Uh, but with the Flux stuff tied in, it kind of pulls them back. There are elements of Episode 5 I also like, and even a few things in Episode 6, but there's also a lot of dumb going on in those episodes. I understand Flux was made at the height of the pandemic with all the restrictions, and it's, a, it's amazing we got anything at all, but... Looking at it, trying to watch it, it's just uninteresting. I feel like Key to Time and Trial of a Time Lord did that kind of thing considerably better. Uh, I just, Flux just doesn't do much for me. There are some good performances in there. Even Whitaker has some moments where she shines. Uh, but it just, at the end, I find it um, just not something I like to go back and rewatch. <clears throat> Next on the list is Series 7, and this is really hard because I tend to think of Series 7 as separate seasons. I think of Series 7A and Series 7B as two separate things because they have a different companion, different Doctor costume, different TARDIS, and they're very different tonally. They feel like different seasons. But for the purpose of this video, I jam them together. And while I tend to love Series 7B for the most part, uh, Series 7A doesn't do as much for me. Asylum of the Daleks is fun, even though it's flawed. I do like A Town Called Mercy, but I hate Power of Three, for the most part. Dinosaurs on the spaceship's just forgettable. And I don't really like The Angels Take Manhattan, either, for the most part. Well, whereas Series 7B, I, lo I love The Snowmen. I love The Bells of St. John, my second favorite Matt Smith episode. Uh, I love Cold War. I love Crimson Horror. And I love Hyde. But Name of the Doctor has a great ending, great beginning, and then just not much in the middle. Nightmare and Silver is okay. Uh, Journey to the Center of the TARDIS, I've only watched it the one time, but it's such utter crap, I've never been able to go back to it. Uh, Reigns of Akatan is very boring for the most part, and I feel like there's one more in there I just don't care for. It's just some high highs, some low lows, and a couple in the middle. Next on the list, almost at a tie with Series 7, is Series 10. I tend to like Series 10 a little more, though. Uh, the, the middle and last part of the Monk trilogy are really bad. Oxygen is really bad. And to be honest, the pilot doesn't do a lot for me, but I really like Smile. I love Thin Ice. I like Extremis. Eaters of Light is better than its reputation. The two-part finale is also phenomenal. So there is some good stuff going on in here. I like Capaldi with Bill. Bill is a great companion. I like Capaldi with her. And this is also my favorite version of Capaldi's Doctor. I love the tenth doc uh, the 12th Doctor here. He reminds me a lot of Pertwee. He's the only Doctor to ever remind me of Pertwee is, is Series 10 uh, Capaldi. I really, really, really like him this season. That's why it ranks here. Uh, next on the list is Season 3. Season 3 suffers from so many missing episodes. Um... The Toy Maker, I really love episode four, but the recons for the first three episodes is hard to get through. But episode four is really good. Mission to the Unknown, I enjoyed well enough. Galaxy Four, I like well enough. I enjoy it. Uh, Myth Makers is really hard to get through that recon. The novelization is also fine. It's not blowing me away, but it's fine. Um, I love the arc. I love the arc. I really enjoy the War Machines. Maybe not as much as most, but I enjoy it. I love the arc more. The Gunfighters is not very good. Uh, and I still have to watch some of the stories this season, like The Savages, The Massacre, and Master Plan. So this is just kind of where it falls right now. Next on the list is Season 21. This is my least favorite Davison season. This is also where Doctor Who really starts to get dark. The same darkness we'd see in Season 22, but it's way better in Season 22. 
Uh, first off, season 21 is bookended by not very good episodes. Warrior's Gate is not good. Twin Dilemma, I don't think, is the absolute dumpster fire some people do. It has some things I like, but it's still pretty bad, especially its characterization of the Doctor post-regeneration trauma or not. It's just really bad. Uh, it's still not good, though. It, it's still really not good. Uh, it also has The Awakening, which doesn't do much for me either. Uh, I like Frontios a lot. I love The Caves of Androzani. Uh, Planet of Fire is just okay. The regular version is probably C tier for me. The special edition really doesn't do much for me. And I feel like I may be forgetting one in there somewhere, but it's just, it's just a middling season for me, honestly. Next on the list is Series 4. Now, I know most people prefer Series 4 over Series 3, but I prefer Series 3 over Series 4. As much as I love Donna, Donna's my favorite modern companion. I love Tin and Donna together. They're great. I'm glad we got them back for the 60th. <clears throat> and there's some good episodes in this season, but there's also some I don't go back to as much. I don't really like Turn Left much, for example. But it also has stuff like Unicorn and the Wasp, The Library, Two-Parter, uh, Planet of the Ood, which are really good. Whereas, again, some of them, like Fires of Pompeii, don't really draw me in. It has a finale that's a little overblown. It's good, but it's a little ridiculously silly at that point, what the stakes are, because Russell always feels like he has to top himself. But it's still an enjoyable watch. Next on the list in fourth place is Season 14. People might be surprised Season 14 is this low. <coughs> but Season 14 is my least favorite of the Hinchcliffe era. And one of the, on the lower end of my Tom era, um, I feel like it's a major step down from season uh, 13. I love season 13. But like, for instance, I would prefer probably 16, season 16, 17, and 18 over 14. Because I find a lot of 14 overrated. The two most overrated stories in all of classic Doctor Who are from this season with the Deadly Assassin and Robots of Death. Which, to be fair, are good stories. I like them. But I don't think they deserve all the accolades they get. I love Robots of Death more for, from a design standpoint. I love the robot design. I love the set design. The actual story is kind of ho-hum to me. Deadly Assassin is good in a bubble, but when you look at the wider context of what it did to the Time Lords and how it just basically made them squabbling politicians, you know, Doctor, the Time Lords have never recovered from that. They've been like that ever since. So it, it, to me, that really affects that story. Uh, on the other side, though, Mask of Mandragora is very underrated, a very enjoyable watch. Day Ex Machina, a very enjoyable watch. Hand of Fear, it has three really good episodes with one episode that just falls apart. Episode four, it falls apart. Uh, I don't dislike it, but episode, it doesn't stick the landing. And that's a really big thing for me is sticking the landing. And Hand of Fear does not do that, even though the actual ending scene is really good. Face of Evil, very underrated story. A great introduction to Leela. I actually really enjoy the jungle set, and I tend to enjoy the actual story as well. And then, of course, you have Talons, which is just phenomenal. Easily Tom Bates. Well, not easily, because Seeds of Doom is right there behind it. But I would say Talons is Tom's best season finale and probably one of the best Doctor Who stories ever made, although Seeds, is, Seeds of Doom is also one of the best Doctor Who stories ever made. So it's still good performances. Tom is amazing in it. Uh, Sarah is amazing in it. And Leela is amazing in it. I mean, those are my two favorite Doctor Who companions, Sarah and Leela. So getting both of them together in one season is nice. It just doesn't quite come together as well as 12 and 14 do for me. Next on the list is season six, actually, Troughton. Now, some people would argue this is his worst season or least best season <coughs> since i don't think troughton has a bad season and then the dominators is a rough watch which is frustrating because there's only seven complete troughton stories it's a bit of a rough watch it's still watchable but a bit of a rough watch uh, i do love the mind robber i think it's a phenomenal idea and well executed and really lends itself to doctor who's uh budget the minimalist approach it takes it takes works really well with doctor who's limited budget uh, the Invasion is phenomenal. Probably the best Cyberman story ever made. It's, I really wish it was complete. I really feel like it would be called the best story Cyberman story ever made if it was complete. The Crotons is very underrated. Uh, possibly uh, one of the two most underrated stories of Classic Who with Revenge of the Cybermen. Very, very good. Bob Holmes being Bob Holmes. A four-parter that knows it only needs to be a four-parter. Uh, the Space Pirates is really hamstrung by the fact that not only is there only one episode surviving, but that there are no telesnaps. So the the recon is a grind to get through. The actual novelization of it is a really good read. I feel like if it was recovered, 
it might not be essential Doctor Who or masterpiece, but I still think uh, it's. I still think it would be held in better regard than it currently is. Uh, the Seeds of Death doesn't do a lot for me. It's better than the Ice Warriors, and it's fine, but it's not really blowing me away. Uh, the Trial and Ice Warrior stories are my two least favorite Ice Warrior stories. I feel like both of the Peladon stories are better, and both of the Modern Who Ice Warrior stories are better. Uh, and then. And then we have the War Games, which is just phenomenally good. I love the War Games. I think it's well-paced, even at 10 episodes. I love the War Games. Uh, and just seeing Troughton, because so much of this season is intact, we really get to see Troughton perform, and Troughton is always such a marvel and just a joy to watch. And then that's also my probably my favorite TARDIS team from the 60s is the second Doctor, Zoe, and Jamie. I love them together barely edging it out at number two is season nine. I find season nine's a little underrated. I love Day of the Daleks. One of the best Dalek stories ever made, especially with the special edition. Curse of Peladon is a fine watch. Not something I want to go back and rewatch all the time, but it's it's fine. Sea Devils is good. Uh, my opinion of the Sea Devils changes depending on my viewing, but it's still very good. Uh, the Mutants, I've only watched it once, and I did enjoy it, but wondering what happened next was kind of the driving factor of that. I don't know how that will hold up on rewatch, but I thought, I thought the topics it was trying to handle are important. I feel like that just could get buried under the fact that this story might drag for some people, but it actually does a really good job trying to talk about social issues and the difference between race relations. And I love the fact that they do actually have a black person cast in a prominent role in this story. I think it's a little unfortunate they named him Cotton. But other than that, and the fact he ends up being the leader of the station at the end of it, I think that was pretty progressive for the time. And then the Time Monster I like. Um, I really enjoy it. it. It might not be as epic as... Um, the Daemons, but I actually, I definitely think it's a lot better in its reputation, even if the execution of Kronos isn't done very well with the bird thing looking tacky, and then the screen at the end where it's, when Kronos is a female also looking tacky, but the actual story I think is, is really good. And then number one on the list is season 26. You got to love season 26. I think season 26 was a wonderful way for Classic Who to go out. It really goes out on top story-wise. You have two stories this season that are just masterpieces and essential watching with Ghost Light and Curse of Fenric. I love Ghost Light. Just the atmosphere of Ghost Light. I love it. It's directed very well. Curse of Fenric is just a classic, the essential McCoy story. It and Remembrance, really. Uh, I think Battlefield isn't perfect. I think it's really good. The incidental music's kind of bad. There is some stilted acting in it. Some of the location works a little work looks a little weird, but it's a really good story. You have some really good performances from like Gene Marsh. It's great to have the Brigadier back one last time. Still a great story. And then you have Survival, which gets a little more credit for being the final story than perhaps it deserves, but it's still good. It's Anthony Ainley's best performance as the master. I uh Really like Sylvester McCoy and Sophie's performances in this as well. It has a pretty good story for the most part. Um, I enjoy it well enough. So that's how I would rank them. I want to know how you would rank them. So comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button as well. And the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another video. I have links to the Patreon down there if you would like to check that out. I want to give a shout out to some of my top tier patrons, Colin Coney and Finn Perkins. I appreciate their support, as I do the support of all of my patrons. It is appreciated. I have links to my Amazon wish list and my Amazon UK wish list, which I have added some stuff to recently. If you would like to check out either of those as well. And my P.O. box is also down there. Most importantly, thank you for watching.